What's going on YouTube? Team SC here with another 3v3 game for you today. Me, Spec, and Brain Crusher, the Dream Team, played this game on Ladder a couple days ago, and I thought I'd go ahead and cast it and show it to you guys. So I do go for a pretty interesting build this game. Uh, this is New Williamsburg. I'm spawning as the Blue Terran in the top corner. My allies are Brain Crusher, as you know, two base Muta, plays the Erg all day, every day. And we do have Spec today spawning as the random Zerg. Now they're commenting, I didn't realize he actually invited Brain Crusher to the party. I thought we were just playing uh, threes with a random partner. So I was like, oh, our teammates here, so that's cool. Anyways, we're up against today, facing against Hyper Crater, the yellow Zerg on the other side of the map. Uh, the purple Protoss, Dino Zombie, and the orange Protoss, Ishmumu. I think that's how you say it. But anyways, this map is New Williamsburg. This is a very huge map. Uh... The only distance is by ground. You can walk either side of the map all the way around. There are two watchtowers that cover the ground paths, but there's a very short air distance, and there's lots of bases. Three relatively easy bases to get up here, and then even three more, and then there's a bunch of bases in the corners and some gold off to the side that are hard to secure. Now, on this map, I am deciding... So I have two Zerg allies, map control shouldn't be uh, too much of an issue. I'm debating about just going straight to Sky Terran. Now you can't go straight, it's a little risky, especially we do know they do have a Zerg ally, but the other two are Protoss. So my idea here is I'm going to go for some speed, well, get some Hellions first just in case of Zerglings, in case we don't have enough as our uh, own Zerg players. So get some Hellions first to kind of just keep us protected against any early game speedlings, then we're going to tech up. I do want to go for Banshees. I do want to get the new Banshee upgrade for the speed boost. It does make them very good at harassing because you can get away, and especially when there's no Terran, because uh, Zerg Overseers and Protoss Observers are not going to catch up to speed Banshees. So if there's no scans, your Banshees could actually stay alive for a very long time and live to be useful. So my idea is to get a couple Banshees, maybe three to four, and then use them to harass the expansions while I tech up to Battle Cruisers. Yep, that's right. I'm going to tech up straight to battle cruisers this game, and it's going to be awesome. Now, I've been having a lot of fun with battle cruisers. Turns out their teleportability is actually pretty ridiculous. Um, hopefully, I'll showcase it a little bit in this match. I don't remember exactly what happened, but you can do all kinds of crazy stuff, especially in the late game. I've done things like teleport to like a base here, a base here, and like one in the main, and they're just scrambling everywhere to deal with the battle cruisers, you know? And meanwhile, you may take the main army and hit one side of the base and then teleport three battle cruisers to just random expansion. It, it's pretty annoying to deal with, I'll tell you that for sure. But anyways, let's see what players do, and I do have my double gas going. Expansion is on the way. Getting the factory reactor on the barracks to switch off for some Hellion play. Do have Brain Crusher over here getting the speed research. Just have one spore ready just in case of early Oracle. And at this time, it is probably highly likely against two Protoss players that there will be some Oracle play. I think uh, if you throw down your detection around 2.30, I think the quickest an Oracle comes is around 3.5 minute mark, or maybe 3 minute mark. It looks like he's going for double Stargates here. Um, this player is going for the Robo Bay, but it looks like I think three and a half, four minutes is the earliest an Oracle goes if they're on point with their build timing. So I've got the eBay going to be getting a turret here shortly. Just you got to make sure, especially against two Protoss, it's not worth the risk in losing your economy early. And we do have Spec here. He is going for some Roach play. Does have this base saturated, working on his second base at the moment, getting a defensive spine. Brain Crusher teching up to Lair at this point as well. The enemy team is have a Bane Lust and is getting Zergling speed, so it looks like Hyper Crater is going for some early game aggression. Should be having the Banelings here for defense in case we have any links running by, because they are. We do have two Zergs, but. Uh, we're just macroing up, playing a very defensive game at this time. No one's doing much of anything, just taking bases. I'm going to be landing that expansion now, and I think I'll go ahead and increase the game speed just a little bit. It's not too much going on yet, just to try and get things going. I'm going to be adding a tech lab on, swapping off the starport to get cloak researched. And we'll see the production tab so we can see what's going on with all the other places. Getting that fusion core, go ahead and restart the research on... Oh, sorry if you have any underage viewers. Spec likes to cuss, and he just swear it on now. My video. That's unfortunate, but okay. We're going to slow it down. Not pause, slow it down. We do have a little action coming in. Zergling's going to be running in, morphing in a couple banelings. Looks like Hyper Crater's trying to do a little bit of aggression here. Going to be attacking some of the drones, but that spine crawler is very well placed. Also, some roaches covering it, so they actually can't even get to the spine. That's pretty good for spec. Not going to lie, Zergling's going to come over here, take out some of the SUVs, trying to run away, getting these Hellions in position to do some splash damage. We do have defensive Zerglings from Brain Crusher coming in, should be able to clean up these Zerglings just fine. In the meantime, it does look like a couple Phoenix here being very annoying, killing a couple of the Overlords of Spec, and a couple random Banelings still alive here. 
Oh, I wonder if he's going to get all these links. Oh, no. Brain Crusher is paying attention to his links. He does not lose them. Oh, he does lose a handful. I was just giving him credit. Do you have some of these Phoenix here being annoying? Picking up a couple roaches. Need to go for that queen. That would be pretty devastating to lose. No Zerg player likes to lose their queens or their overlords. If you're Zerg, this is probably very frustrating. And, I mean, we could have probably assumed so. With two Zergs on a team, one Protoss will usually go for some Phoenix. They tend to be really good at map control and dealing with all the overlords. But, anyways, third expansion is coming down for me. Do have the Banshee on the way. Uh, do have Cloak Research. Should be starting up the Hyper Flight Rotors here pretty soon. And I just want to get a couple, three to four, before I start harassing. And then slowly, hopefully, my idea is... The Banshees will keep me safe. Now, there are Phoenixes out on the map, and Phoenixes are pretty good, but with Cloak and the Speed Boost, the idea is the Observer shouldn't be able to actually get to the Banshees in time to get Envision, so these Phoenixes won't really do much. I mean, I guess they could follow my Cloak Banshees, but in that case, I would probably just have to end up running home. Did have his Marine here on patrol. Did see them dropping that base. Do have another Marine here as well, patrolling, checking for side base, and it does look like Ishimura is going to come expand here. Marine is going to get this probe kill, and we do have intel that this base is uh, going up at this time. In the meantime, we do have Zerglings for Brain Crush coming over here, being very annoying, going to be harassing Hypergirder, trying to deny this base. Good thing we had that Marine Patrol in there. Do have vision, do know what's going on. But it looks like defensive Zerglings. He does have to cancel the base, so this is very good for us. Going to lose Zerglings, but it was worth it. He did force a cancel on that base, delaying the economy. And in a war of three, so you need all the econ and army you can get. Phoenixes are coming back here to the side, trying to harass more bases. It does look like primarily Hydralisk and Zerglings for Brain Crusher, and Spec is going for Roach Hydra. Throwing down a command center here. I do have the third base coming. I tend to on this map after my third base, especially if I'm going for a kind of a tech heavy build like Sky Terran. It's usually a smart idea to wall this side, or whichever corner you're not using, wall it off. Usually this side with the Planetary Fortress, a couple depots and turrets. Because uh, it will save you in the long run, especially against the depth run buys and uh Oh, we do have the Banshees here. Actually, I think we got a cancel on that Protoss base. I'm sorry I missed a little action. I think there's a, another base here that we actually got forced to cancel on. Now, I do have my Banshees cloaked. I am being very ballsy, staying here right next to all these Phoenixes. But I'm trying to watch the map, just making sure I don't see any invisible thing moving. Because you can kind of see the observers when they come close. And I'm not seeing anything yet. So I'm going to take my chance and deny this base. Move a little closer. I still don't see any observers. So I'm going to get a couple drone kills. And now I realize my cloak's running a little low. I'm probably pushing my luck. And I need to move these Banshees out. But as you can see, these Banshees are ridiculously fast with the speed upgrade. Going to be moving out, waiting for Cloak to recharge. And it does look like he took that base again. I think there was a base there. So these Banshees are already doing work, and this is kind of the idea. You get three or four Banshees with speed and Cloak. You come by and you harass these side bases, and then you run away. And if there's no Terran with scans, it's very difficult to deal with these Banshees. Cloak does run out. I decide to just go back home. I don't want to risk losing these Banshees. I want to keep them alive as long as possible. Do have a big army from Brain Crusher, Zerglings, and Hydralisk coming over here. Going to be dealing with this base. Zerglings are one Carapace, and Hydralisk are one one at this time. It is forcing the air army to move back they have to come defend this base but i don't think they will make it there in time these hydralists should make pr pretty quick work of this base the dps on hydralists is pretty sick um do manage to snipe the base phoenixes do not make it back in time and at this point it's not even worth engaging in the meanwhile we do have spec still teching up still taking more bases throw down some more command centers just macroing up taking our thirds securely because we've been able to harass them at this time which has been very good and this is kind of the you know you just have your banshees hiding out look at that we got three kills two kills four kills but the real glory here is that we actually denied the expansions uh it does look like the phoenixes did try to poke and he does have a couple tempest now so this is very annoying he could start sniping because tempest have that very long range uh, can kind of start picking away and chipping away at that zerg base we're going to be moving the Banshees back in. I do see the Tempest moving across the middle of the map, so now is the time to harass, in my opinion. Going to be good for this base. I think I do force a cancel on it again. He does have to cancel. Very annoying. Harper Crater, very angry with these Banshees. Going to be cloaking and trying to run away. Don't lose a Banshee, and that's very good. Going to be have to back out of there. They do have a bit much at this time. Meanwhile, Tempest are going to be sniping the Spore Crawl. I think Spore Crawl tried to walk up a little closer, but it just does not outrange the Tempest. Tempest have a... 15 range, which is pretty insane. The Tempest range is bigger than the amount of vision they have. So if you have an observer kind of out here in front of your Tempest, your Tempest can shoot a lot farther. Just in case you didn't know. A little fun fact. 
for you guys. Going to be having a couple lurkers, hydras, and lings moving here. Does not see that base. Looks like he's going to counter push, try to do some aggression at the main, because uh, he doesn't really have anything to answer this right now. I'm still making a couple army. I do have liberators. One one just finished up. Getting a couple Vikings, just waiting until I get a comfortable number because I don't want to lose much of this. But I do see the Phoenix is back up, so I'm going to go ahead and come snipe out these Tempests. Three Tempests alone isn't going to be too big a threat for these uh, Liberators and Vikings. But he did have a good amount of Phoenixes, did have to bring them home. Brain Crusher is putting on some pressure. does have a couple Lurkers here, forcing the Air Army to kind of come home and try to pick this off. But he is in a tight spot. Brain Crusher probably shouldn't stay here too long. Uh, he is very susceptible to getting ambushed from every angle and just completely destroyed. Uh, no observer here, so they can't see the lurkers. Just doing a little dance, kind of just keeping the air army back at home. Did take the pressure off of his base. Going to be uh, locking down the mineral line with a couple liberators. And do actually manage to kill a bunch of drones here. Uh, sorry guys, team games, all this too much going on, hard to keep track of everything, but meanwhile, they do have a purple Protoss trying to come in, does a little damage, do manage to snipe a couple liberate, lurkers, excuse me, a couple observers here, do have this Sky Phoenix is coming back to deal with this army, and uh, liberators are pretty good, but you want usually Vikings to deal with the Phoenix, Vikings or battle creatures are very good against Phoenix, because uh, these Phoenix can kind of kite your liberators all day, the splash is good if you do get a hit, but the Vikings do the... Very good damage to armored and outrange the Phoenix, so they can't kite the Vikings. Uh, meanwhile, I do have the Zerg coming back. Does look like Brain Crusher is going to lose his army. Didn't really get much damage done, but did keep a lot of pressure, uh, allowing us to take some more bases. Just expand, getting more bases up. This is the fourth base, uh, which means I should be started, able to start Battle Cruiser production here pretty soon. Uh, usually, at three base is a good amount to get a couple Banshees, Liberators, maybe Vikings. After four base and eight gas, then you can actually start getting out a couple cruisers. And if you get a fifth base, if you're lucky, then you can get a lot of battle cruisers. And keep up with your upgrades too. Do have two two on the way for the Sky Terran. Brain Crusher is moving a couple lurkers. Does have a handful here. No observers for this guy. He needs to get an Oracle out of that Stargate so he can use that detection ability to deal with these. But actually, he is able to see him. Uh, I guess they're in range of the cannon. He was able to pick up those uh, lurkers, but this one I think is just out of the range of the photon cannon, so they can't get vision. War Prism is coming here, being very annoying. Did drop some zealots, missed that a little bit, but these battle cruisers are going to make quick work. Now the battle cruiser is here, guys, the beast of the Terran race. Lurker is going to be putting on pressure. Looks like they are trying to counter push, and this is why you need this planetary fortress here. Luckily, we do have Specs army here as well, but this planetary fortress is definitely. Slowing down this army, they could have moved those lurkers up a lot way and potentially ran a couple things by into the main base. Going to have to bring this air army, going to be locking it down. Uh, probably not smart for the Zerg to be here, he does not have enough hydras and liberators doing a bunch of damage. Look how quick they destroy that Zerg army. There's still some left though, Spec needs to be careful, there's still four lurkers down here. Going to be throwing down more planetary fortresses and at this point, uh, late in the game, you do start to pool a lot of money. Uh, so it's definitely smart to throw down some extra commands and get some orbitals and planetary fortresses if you play Terran. Other races have other things they could do, but it does look like a lot of zealots coming in, Tempest moving in, trying to do some damage to the base. Meanwhile, that single lurker here is about to actually snipe that Nexus. It's pretty sick uh, that he didn't deal with it. Bringing back the Vikings and the battle cruisers, and it's going to be a sky battle, gentlemen. Now these Tempests aren't attacking. I don't know why they're getting so close. Tempests are actually very good against battle cruisers, but Vikings are good against Tempests. Uh, if it gets any more, it's probably smart to transition into Ravens, because Point Defense Drone does lock down the uh, Ra Tempest attack. Uh, it does block it, if anyone of you didn't know, but Point Defense Drone is kind of a little bit nerfed because it doesn't last too long, but it does help with these quick engagements. Parasitic Bomb is going to be coming down for spec. It's going to be dealing with these Tempests, sending the Air Army trying to pursue, trying to snipe out as many of these Tempests as I can, because you don't want them to get a huge number of them. They're very annoying. Tempest do flee to safety, going to have to pull back. Meanwhile, the Banshees are still alive. I think we did get another base while amidst all that, and that's kind of what you have to do. Bring the Zelts back, try to protect the Fusion Course and keep our cruiser production. Uh, it does look like... No, nothing's over here. I thought I saw something. But anyways, Banshees are going to get the snipe on that Nexus. That is incredible. And that's kind of just what you got to do. See, we have these pocket Banshees, and this is these are the real heroes right here. These are what's keeping us the time to mac her up and stay in this game. Going to be losing a Banshee. I think I didn't pay attention. Need to cloak out of there. Uh, stop paying attention for one second, and that's what happened. You lose your Banshees. Uh, but we still have two. That's very good. These Banshees are at eight kills and six kills. It's very good, but what they've done is they've just prevented the enemy from taking these as bases the whole game. If they had this economy, it'd probably be a very different game right now. They would be 
probably up in our face, but we've been managing to give them a run for their money. A couple Hydras here still being very annoying. Good, good job denying this base from the Protoss. Uh, mass Overseer over here is tired of this burrow shenanigans and all these cloak Banshees, I bet. And these Hydras should have to run away. These Tempests outrange the Hydras and can shoot from safety. Hydras going to have to go back home. And Spec here still mackering up. Haven't seen too much from Spec. Bunch of Hydras and a couple Parasitic Bombs, but I think he's just been chilling. Uh, this whole game, letting uh, me and Brain Crusher do all the harass while he just kind of mackers up. He does have T2 Hydralisk and does have a good amount of Parasitic Bombs. does look like Hyper Crater is going to be coming over here, taking out Brain Crusher's uh, Zerg Army. His upgrades are at 1-1, one, one. not fully upgraded yet. Air Army is 2-2 two, two for the Protoss. And I just took these bases, it's very annoying, going to have to lift off and just try to get out of there while I bring all the Sky Fleet back to help protect. And Command Center is kind of getting focused down. I decided to use the Battlecruiser Teleport ability to come back home safely. Get here a little quicker because they do move a little slow. Liberators also getting in at this time along with the Vikings. And uh, Tempest are going to be sniping out the Battlecruiser. But we do have the Zerg for Spec coming back. And the rest of the Battlecruiser fleet going to be moving in the Air Army. And should be able to make quick work of this Protoss fleet. Air Army is 2-2 for the Protoss. But we are at 3-3. Which means we are as optimal as we can be at this point. Uh couple lurkers here do get a snipe on the zerg base unfortunately and going to need to be bringing this back because they are counter pushing down like i said this is why you need to have some planetary fortress i did it more for this one in time uh... two definitely would have helped to hold a lot but that one planetary fortress did stall us some good time or else this army would be up in our main up in our expansions and we do have to come back home pretty quick to deal with this uh, this is very annoying. Looks like he's all at 1-1 one, one upgrades. Still slacking a little behind on their upgrades, but we have been doing a good job denying his bases. Well, you know, while this is going on, still moving the Banshees back to harass, guys. I mean, that's what you have to do. When their tension is elsewhere, that's when you move in your harassment force to do some damage, okay? Going to be bringing the Liberators. Vikings make quick work of the Colossus, and these battle creatures should clean everything up. They're going to have to run away. These Liberators do too much damage, and the Zerg army is also back home. Uh, does look like a task force for hyper curator them they're trying everything they're doing what they need to do to stay in this game they're definitely harassing everywhere and doing a lot with a little bit banshee's still here doing damage this one's just a little bit outrange i think i made it go on hold position just to attack the workers which is unfortunate for me um and this is also very unfortunate because i can't mine because there's uh, enough here just just to lock my stuff down I think I'm going to end up using a battle cruiser teleport to come protect this base, and that's why it's useful. You know, battle cruiser is very slow army. All you need is one teleport it in. Up oh, here we go, and going to save that command center from that dirty hydralisk. Deal with that roach, and hopefully also deal with that lurker. If I was actually paying attention, but there's kind of a lot going on. I was trying to manage my banshees. I think the hero banshee force has died at this time. His void rays make quick work, but didn't get that nexus. If they were both firing it down, we might have been able to get it, but. At this point, the Banshees did carry us into the late game, and we do have our main army to try to hopefully seal the deal, bring it in, make it sure to build more command centers there, and keep that wall going. And look, at this time, there's more Jugglings coming to run by. Wall is not complete, so they are actually able to walk, run by, and go into the main base, but we did manage to cut off about half of them, and this is what you got to do, it's, especially if you're Terran. You always need to wall, 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 because uh, these kind of run by us, so that's how you lose games, and... Especially if you're going for this very slow behemoth fleet. Anyways, finally taking these bases. I think I'm going to lose that. Okay, I finally repaired. I finally paid attention. That was burning down at 10 HP. Do manage to salvage that command center. Spec here with the mass hydra ball. Brain crush with a couple hydras. But he's been doing a good job putting pressure on these bases. Looks like they're finally getting these bases up. But they still haven't been able to get these. He just got this base up. Uh, but he had to fight for it. Those banshees definitely did work. Look like, like a lurker being annoying, going to be teleporting a battle creature here again. Although I could have just dropped a scan, I didn't realize that, but I was uh, all about using the battle cruiser ability today. And it's time to push, guys. We're 3 3, we got a massive fleet, good amount of battle cruisers, a bunch of Vikings to cover them, and just a few liberators. Now, I could probably use a couple more liberators, they're definitely good gr support against any ground units. But uh, we're worried about the sky toss and all the air units right now. Going to be locking up, kind of lose that liberator for nothing. But this other liberator should be able to do some pretty good damage. Vikings destroying all the air things for this Protoss. And Battle Cruisers making a quick work of the rest. Battle Cruisers fully upgraded. They do have six armor, which means they are very tanky. A couple of Void Rays coming from behind, but we do also have the Yamato Cannon Research. Should be able to take out these Void Rays fairly quick. Yamato Cannon everything, and it does look like the Zerg is also pushed at this time. Taking out the army. Sorry I missed that, guys. 
and they, it's the GG. All right, so let me know what you guys think. I think this was a pretty good game, kind of showcasing the battle cruisers and the speed banshees and what you kind of need to do with them, especially if you're playing in team games. Uh, obviously, I think like mass banshees is a bad idea because one Thor would kill like 20 banshees, but uh, especially. Yeah, I don't know. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, I didn't do too much of it this game, but what's really fun is teleporting the battle creatures behind the enemy base. I think I mentioned this earlier. Uh, hopefully I'll get another good game where I can showcase that to you. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. Till next time, have a good day.